when you get thrown from a motorcycle, that inch and a half of engineering between your skull and the ground can mean the difference between sustaining a serious head injury or just getting up and dusting yourself off. Look, I'm not a specialist in the construction and design of helmets, but I've been wearing them and crashing in them for 40 years. There's a bit of a display of my recent experiences with helmets, but I'm gonna hinge this episode around this baby in particular. And the reason I've chosen it, it's because it's the last helmet that I had a big crash in, like proper crash. Here, check out the footage. <laughs> Pretty gnarly crash, head first into the ground, snapped the peak off, snapped the headlight off the CR, got up, charged back to the bike, kept racing. Business as usual, I was fine mentally for the rest of the day, I kept racing, wasn't an issue. Which brings me to a pretty serious subject surrounding helmets which nobody talks about, and that's concussion. Clearly, I'm not a doctor. This isn't about offering any sort of medical advice. This is purely my experience of being knocked the f out for wearing the wrong helmets. Now let me explain this in detail. This is two scenarios that happened to me 10 years ago. And let me just bring up the photos. And when I say 10 years ago, that's because that's the last time I had serious concussion. Now in the last 10 years, I've had some big offs, don't get me wrong. Yes, predominantly I was using Fox helmets. This isn't about a plug for Fox. This is about using the right helmets. Let me explain. Okay, here we go. Found it. Yep, it all checks out. This is the helmet I was wearing, testing Toby's um, championship winning bike for the AORC that year. This isn't the situation. I didn't crash his bike, right? This particular occasion in that exact helmet, I was doing a shakedown ride with Ben Grabham and Todd Smith. I'd thrown it away in a corner, just nothing serious, apparently. Head hit the ground, boom, lights out. Apparently it wasn't out for too long. It was just a, you know, dazed and confused kind of scenario. But even back at the car with the boys, didn't know why we were there, didn't know which direction we were going. Had we been on the ride, were we going on the ride? Concussion's not a good thing. Okay, second scenario was later that year. I was always riding, racing, testing, hanging out with the hitters, you know, the Toby Prices, the Grubbos, like all the boys. I've become good friends with them. And on this particular occasion, we weren't filming. It was training. I gave in to peer pressure. The boys kind of hit me up to, to double this, this section of road. And I got locked into a train and we were heading out on the ride. Wonka was behind me, Toby was in front. It's like I had no excuse. I sort of had to do it and I didn't want to do it. And that's the last thing I remember. I come to in a hospital and Toby's sitting on the end of the bed and there was an entire nine hour window of my life that was seemingly erased. When you get properly knocked out, you are unplugged. Like in avatar where they take the host body offline that just drops you were out toby had to start explaining to me blow by blow mate you crashed on the jump i'm thinking what did did i did they put me in an ambulance no and he's like the boys were really scared because apparently i was proper smashed crab on the ground all fingers curled up snoring like really gnarly scenario i'd come to after a couple of minutes and then pick my bike up and started it and they were just looking at each other going what shit what the hell we got to get him home so i rode the bike back to wonka's house don't remember any of that and by this time i've i've had this real realization like not again that bloody helmet it's the knockout special and sure enough it was the same brand helmet it was a brand new bling thing that i really like i'd proceeded to t explain to this doctor that the helmet i was wearing is incidentally a knockout special because the same things happened again. Toby just bursts into laughter on the end of the bed and tries to hide it. And I'm like, dude, what's so funny? He said, mate, that's like the 10th time today you've told the doctor the knockout special story. This is the really scary thing about helmets and concussion. And that week when I got home, I got that, that helmet back then, put my finger through the liner and pushed on the foam. It, this is where I came to the ultimate 
realization and I never use that helmet again because when I put my finger in there and pushed on it, that foam was hard as a rock. It was really, it was dense. It didn't give and I thought, it's too hard. The foam's too hard. It's like wood. It's just transferring that impact and knocking me out. Okay, here's a little example I want to use to make it easier for you guys to understand where I'm going with this. When your head hits the ground inside the helmet, this foam inside the shell of the helmet is the suspension that absorbs the impact of your skull hitting the ground, okay? I can prove the test to myself right here, right now. I've just got my 2013... Moto Nomad helmet. By Moto Nomad 2, two years later, I said, there is no way we are doing 9,000 kilometers across Central Asia in a motocross helmet. I need a bubble lid. The difference in foam density between these two helmets is amazing, right? The Fox is 100% the crisp apple. I can push in that foam and my fingers sinking into it like this apple. This helmet, this foam, the resistance, it's putting up resistance like an unripe avocado. And there are areas where it feels like friggin' wood. My God, how lucky I was not to eat shit in friggin' Kazakhstan. Imagine having that level of concussion and waking up in a hospital in Kazakhstan or Russia or Mongolia. Like, my God. I guess what I'm trying to say is cheap helmets shouldn't even be allowed to be sold. It doesn't make sense that that's even an option when it comes to actually keeping you alive. It's like having cheap seat belts in cars. Helmets should be the same, irrespective of their shape and color and design and all that. There should be a standard that is pushed so much higher on multiple levels, not just the impact test, not just the penetration test. There needs to be a way of actually putting a concussion test into these bloody helmets because... I've seen it over the years, you know, where some of our best athletes have had career-ending crashes because they were sponsored by the wrong helmet. It's a big call, but it, in, in a lot of areas, it's the reality. And I can guarantee you there's some riders out there that know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, don't take my word for it. Have a look at this. This is a real-world example. This is Grabo at the peak of his career, the Desert King, won Fink multiple times, won the Australian Safari multiple times. This particular occasion, he was leading the Condo 750 Rally in New South Wales and he hit a kangaroo at 150 kilometres an hour and it pitched him headfirst into the ground. Yes, he broke vertebrae in his back. No, he's not dead. Look at that helmet. This is an earlier model Fox V4 or 3, I'm not sure. I don't know. There's nothing else to say point I'm trying to make with that bit of footage is he was protected from what could have should have been a life-changing head injury this is a serious matter you need to be armed with with some knowledge and for god's sake if if you're putting helmets on your children please do the foam test you know check it a kid's head more so because they have a softer skull. You might as well put a coconut shell on their head if, if, you, if you're buying a cheap helmet. It's gonna stop them getting cut open, but it's not gonna stop them getting concussion. Okay, the last element of this is something everybody really needs to understand. This is what happens to this foam when you have a crash, right? Okay, can you see that? Can you see that depression, my heel? has left in that foam. If you have had a big off and your head's hit the ground, that helmet is done. It's done its job. The foam, once it's compressed, is done. And that area of the helmet is compromised. So there's only one thing to do with that. Lock it away in a cabinet as a memento or destroy it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with this puppy. So it got me thinking, why do some of the cheaper helmets have such a hard inner foam? It makes perfect sense. Every helmet has to pass a, what they call a penetration test. They get a weighted spike and they drop it onto the helmet from a set height. If that spike punctures the outer shell and penetrates through the foam, that helmet's failed. The design of that helmet is scrapped. It will not get a certification. A lot of the expense and technology is in creating the strength in the outer shell. 
if a cheap helmet is just plastic or whatever, that spike's going to punch th straight through it. So maybe that's it. Maybe the only way these cheap helmets are able to pass that penetration test because their shell is that cheap is by putting a higher density foam. So there's more resistance for the spike. I don't know. I'm just saying this out aloud here, purely out of morbid fascination. I'm curious to see how this may handle the, the penetration test. I don't actually have that testing equipment, but what I do have is an 80 pound compound bow. And I'm gonna shoot the fox lid with it. Okay, well now you're probably wondering what the hell is Reven doing? Well, look, I am a property owner. In fact, all the surrounding farms around here guaranteed there is a firearm of some caliber in their family home. Um, I'm just not ready to own a gun yet. Didn't grow up with them. I will at some point. It's, you know, well within my rights to as a landowner for pest control. We got feral pigs, foxes and rabbits and all kinds of stuff. Compound bow just suits my style. I had a slingshot as a kid and just kind of used to the whole firing a projectile by hand. Just something I really wanted to do outside of bloody building a house and riding bikes. I just, I needed something else and here it is. The other good thing about it, this is an 80 pounder. So in the archery world, it's kind of like the YZ450 of bows. And for my first bow, it would be like buying a fully blown YZ450 for your first bike. So I just went in hard. Not saying I got guns, but um, you kind of need a good set to even use this, which is cool because a kid, actually most young adults wouldn't even be able to use this thing. It is full on. All right, enough talk. Come on, let's get in the zone and see if I can put it in the eye. Right here, I reckon we're on here. Let's put the fox lid up front and um, get this over and done with, eh? Well, here we go. A somewhat fitting end to a uh, quality helmet. One more, uh, just for good measure, eh? Bit of wind, but um, the old 80 pounder doesn't really care about the wind. It's taken two good hits in two different areas of the helmet. Let's go have a bit of a look. Holy shit, that's a head, that first one was a proper headshot. Okay, so it's glanced off, punctured the first layer of the skin, come through and just broken the outer edge. But this is the, this is the true test of a quality helmet right here. It's an 80 pound bow, like anyone who's into the bow archery hunting game, you know what an 80 pound bow can do. I had my suspicions that it may go straight through the thing and out the other side. That just shows you the quality of this carbon. Here's the force involved here. Oh, holy shit. I don't think I can even get these out. Oh. Far out. If that was a cheap ass plastic helmet, Guarantee the arrow would just blow straight through it. Or I could pull that out. That is that is just not coming out. And I can't even get it out of one layer. I think I've proven my own point about the integrity of the shell and the strength of the shell of this level of helmet. And for that reason, having such a strong, well-designed outer shell allows the inner foam to be a lot softer, a lot more compressible. And that is what saves your ass.
your head and you know potentially your life ah well there you have it look if you've just showed up to my channel and you're thinking who the hell is this guy just click on this video right here that'll explain everything for everyone else thanks for subscribing there's plenty more unique content to come cheers